Welcome back to the Steven Universe podcast. I'm Mackenzie Atwood, and today as we continue our deep dive into the people and places of Steven Universe, we've come to Lapis Lazuli. Now, the last time we saw Lapis, she was leaving Earth. So what does that mean for her character and her story? We're going to ask creator Rebecca Sugar in this episode. I've also got actress Jennifer Paz, who voices Lapis, along with storyboard supervisor Hilary Florido. They're going to share their thoughts and insights on what they love best about Lapis and some of their favorite moments and episodes. And we also managed to grab Lapis herself for a few minutes before she left the planet to talk about her love of fart jokes, being trapped in a mirror, and her feelings about shoes. So let's get started today with creator Rebecca Sugar and former executive producer Ian Jones-Cordy. Thank you guys so much for coming on and talking to me. Of course. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, for sure. So, so today we're talking about Lapis. What was Lapis like early on in the conception of the show? Uh, Lapis kind of goes all the way back before the show. She's a little based off of a character in a comic that I never finished, which was actually based off a comic that I did in high school. Yeah. So actually, I guess in a way, it's sort of the oldest, 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 oldest character, this character yeah. Margo who is just a, a product of all of my teen angst in the form of a comic, <laughs> sort of at the, at the time when I was a teenager. And then I was doing this new comic that was sort of revisiting her. I was thinking about that character as an adult. I think I had done that original comic when I was kind of in a haze of young love and didn't really couldn't really see how that could go awry or anything. And mm-hmm. then when mm-hmm. I revisited that as an adult... I was sort of thinking about the kind of toxicity that I had learned about since then and sort of revisiting that as a thought. And then um, when we brought her into the show, early on she was – I know that the, she didn't have her water wings yet because Jeff invented that. Yeah, yeah. She had water powers mm. and angel wings. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> she was just going to be everything. I was yeah, just Jeff like, kind of put those together. Uh, I remember we always thought she was going to be like kind of like moody. Like, I don't know what the best way to explain. Well, she's vulnerable. She's yeah. incredibly vulnerable and had been taken advantage of. But she opens up to Stephen really early. So that mm. was like a really good thing to sort of anchor her in the world of the show. Yeah. The thing about Margot going all the way back, the character, the comic character was Margot, going all the way back to my comics from high school is that she was sort of a, a troubled teen, but then she had the support of this happy-go-lucky kid who... Ian, you pointed out at some point, it's just my brother Stephen, which I didn't even think about when I was writing this thing. (laughs) It's like, oh yeah, I guess I've been writing the same story since. Yeah. (laughs) Forever. That always always happens, though. Uh, Yeah, you're always going to insert a little bit of yourself. Yeah. Because that's that's what makes it real, I feel like. Were there any, like, inspirations that you can think of outside of, like, the real stuff that you were experiencing? I mean, oh gosh, it all, there's all this stuff that relates to that comic, because the water... Just being in the in the comic I was doing, Margot is in this space and she's being sort of manipulated by this person who can control the weather. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so there's a lot of, <laughs> of ocean that was like thrashing, and uh, he's a surfing mm. he's a surfing dog. Yeah. There was <laughs> a lot of like. <laughs> no, he's a, there's a, okay. There's a, thing, there's a comic. There's a, in the okay. This is probably boring, right? Because it's about a comic <laughs> that will never that exist. Does, doesn't exist. Um, yeah. In the com- <laughs> in the comic, there's like a surfing dog that's like cool, and then there's like a scary, evil dog that can control the weather, and yeah. they like one of them manipulates the weather, and then the other one surfs on it because yeah. he's cool <laughs> and unfazable. Uh, and she loves both of these characters, these the cartoon dogs, but then um, she ends up. They end up both being the same horrible person. Right. They end up being like yeah, <laughs> oh, like the evil weather. Is- yeah. Like, it makes me think the way you're talking about the, um, just, like, the manipulation and stuff, obviously, it makes you think of, like, the whole arc with Jasper and just, like, the relationship there. Like, what were you guys, what did you want to touch on with that? I think, well, there was something that I wanted to express that, was, that I'd, I'd never really seen, but I just felt was really real, which is this, it's like, you can be in this awful situation, uh, especially with someone who, like, if you're with someone who, um... May, really makes you believe that it's your fault and that you have to make it right and that you need them and also like Lapis is in this really specific situation where she felt like she had no control and then she was able to exercise all this hateful control over this person who was just 
you know, it almost didn't matter that it was Jasper. It was just she, she had so much anger at so many people mm-hmm. that she was able to take out on Jasper. And she she gave up her ability to do that when they separated. Yeah. So, like, that's a huge amount of power that she suddenly loses by being away from her, even though it's so profoundly negative. And then Jasper mm-hmm. can kind of twist the knife because she, they were so closely connected that she knows that that's something that Lapis really needed to do and had to had to do and did to her. So she's mm-hmm. angry, but she's also she also participated in this like incredible power surge that she wants because she's really pretty self destructive. There's a lot going on with that. I could yeah. talk about it for yeah, hours. Yeah, I could talk about it for hours. Um, it's just yeah toxic it's just it's toxicity yeah man that was mm-hmm. one of the luckiest things i did not know that the stone oh, yeah. malachite, malachite is yeah. toxic in water and when i read that i was like it man is? yes mm-hmm. i was like that's great did not know that uh going in <laughs> yeah it worked out perfect luckiest coincidence of all <laughs> yeah. time you should have just told everyone that it was it was intentional yeah well, can you uh too late, too late now. <laughs> can you cut this <laughs> uh hey guess what everybody uh malachite is <laughs> I totally knew that malachite is toxic in water. Uh, Anyway, I started, you know, I started doing a lot more gem research later on. Like when we were working on Smokey, uh, that was one that I really liked. The mean, the meaning of that stone. stone, Yeah, it it was about sort of positivity at at work. There's like the teamwork element, and it was. um, I think Stephen and Amethyst are kind of the closest to like me and Stephen's sibling relationship. And there's all this stuff about Smoky Quartz that felt like the perfect sort of example of that because we work together and he you know lifts me up and, and, and supports me in this way but uh, malachite on the other hand malachite i didn't i didn't look malachite. anything up about malachite we weren't like it was a, yeah. it was a cool name yeah it was really cool it was that's just amazing. really cool and a yeah. cool looking stone <laughs> honestly like True. I, I always feel like that's a good reason to do something just because it's cool yeah. rule, rule of cool <laughs> rule well of i cool. still maintain yeah. the rule of cool yes <laughs> the gemstone thing you're talking about made me think about like lapis's stone and like the way that it's placed. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I have a lot of thoughts about. Gem, yeah, yeah. Gem what, what's the what were the choices there? Because it's such interesting to have it on her back. Well, that's the thing. The thing about Lapis is that she feels like she has no control over her life or herself, and she's really, really vulnerable. And so to have a gem on your back, I mean, it make, it makes sense for her. It's sort of between her wings, but to have it, your gem on your back, I mean, you can't see it. You can't really understand it. You. For her, it's very exposed. Her lack of control and her vulnerability, that's what her gem placement is about. She's kind of stuck and lost and, like, will never kind of be able to find that direction because this huge part of herself is almost hidden from herself and and just totally exposed to everyone else. Yeah, and we kind of mm. echoed that with the design of the mirror that she gets stuck in. Mm-hmm. Um, the gem is sort of in the back away from the yeah. part that would be um, actually exposed to whatever she's actually supposed to be looking at. And, uh, yeah, so that really kind of figured in to her introduction as well. Speaking of the mirror, there's a lot of, like, I feel like with with Flappus, there's a lot of, like, visuals that are, like, just really sh- striking. And it felt like, I remember Matt and Ben told me that, like, there was, like, a sticky note with Lapis's like, water tower being mm-hmm. one of those really early visuals that like you sort of built your way up to yeah the mirror moment where she gets taken out of the mirror felt like another one of those moments like what what was it like conceptualizing the character with those moments in mind oh man a lot of that is just paul Vileka yeah. did this amazing sequence mm-hmm. that where the water is like coming up around his feet on the ground and, and forming into um, like a crystal shape that is then... that is all paul and then, yeah, Paul did this amazing board, and then we both drew drew into those boards, too. You I drew think... Lapis forming. And, yeah, I did the forming. And then some, yeah. of the, some of the hand stuff, and you did the hand rising up. Rising and up behind her. Yeah, 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 that was me. I did, I did the gems running up, and then the hand coming down, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. it was really fun. I mean, my, my favorite stuff in there is the when he's pulling the gem out oh of the yeah mirror. that's all yeah well, that's paul, all oh, paul, paul. Valico did it oh my god he gosh. did like an awesome job with that it was like very i remember watching the pitch of it and it was so stressful too. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, it was just like what is he gonna do and then i and, mean, yeah. music for that part yeah, the music so was really good intense yes. and yeah they came up with the lapis theme uh yeah. which has been like a recurring sort of like a recurring leitmotif for lapis throughout the series 
and it's uh it's very like haunting and cool yeah one of my favorite moments in the series. I remember when we yeah. were do you had some thoughts about what it should sound like at the top of the tower that were related oh, yeah. to um Yeah, I, I was yeah, my fa- like one of my favorite video games, Zelda Link's Awakening for Game Boy. There's like this moment at the end where you meet like you meet like this celestial being and it's got like this cool like kind of twinkly sort of ethereal kind of score and uh we referenced that to Ivy and Sirashu, and they created something that's like, yeah, it's it's that same, it's in that same sort of neighborhood as the Lapis music, where it's like very haunting, and yeah, the whole idea was sort of to give uh, Ocean Gem and Mirror Gem their kind of their own personality, and you sort of see it with like sort of like the palettes we use, and also like that episode is like one of the very early times where Steven is actively like going against the gems rules. And he even gets grounded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, the I feel like those episodes have like a unique personality that's all about Lapis. And yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. It was, it's something I, when I'm showing people the show to get them to start watching it, that's one of the ones I show because it's just, I feel like it came together so well. Like all those pieces, you know? Yeah. Le- like recently with Lapis, we've seen the whole, her whole arc where she, flew away she took the barn and flew away in raising the barn and so i was wondering was it hard to make that decision like and and why was it necessary in you guys opinion i mean it's funny because like looking at uh the barn and especially lapis and paradox relationship like you could kind of see this moment coming that there's like even when they first get to the barn there's like some real uh, cracks in that partnership. And then as mm-hmm. it goes on, it's like there's something weird going on, uh, you know, with these two. And it might not be like 100% healthy. And sort of that moment was sort of like the culmination of all that stuff. It's a, This is a tricky question to answer because her arc is not over. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't yeah. really talk mm. about how... Um, oh, wait, is that a huge spoiler? What, <laughs> I was that her arc's say, not over? Um, okay, wait, maybe don't say this. I, I don't know, like, yeah. what? She's just going to leave and I mean, there's going to be, I mean, <laughs> there's clearly going to be yeah. more episodes I mean, with have, Lapis in Yeah, them. I won't say how, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she, she continues to be... Obviously, she still has... Even if we never addressed it, she yeah. still have things to work through off I mean, screen. she had so much baggage coming out of the stuff with Jasper that sort of getting into this new situation at the barn was bound to i don't know it was it was like headed for disaster in 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 more ways mm, than one right when you get out of something that bad and that attached and then you go immediately to a new relationship well yeah it's she's like probably I mean, a bad sign i yeah. mean you know just not, like i mean let's okay, just like rebecca said she's got a lot of lapis has like a lot of pent up sort of you know issues from being stuck in a mirror then like Mm -hmm. getting stuck in like getting imprisoned by like homeworld gems then getting stuck in a fusion for months i mean it's like (laughs) look look okay it's not like (laughs) it's not like they're a pair of of, like people just bopping around and deciding to be roommates or anything they're running from (laughs) yeah they're running from a (laughs) despotic yes they're they're you know this is uh a very specific situation. I think the thing about Lapis is that she's incredibly afraid, and that didn't go away. Yeah. And, I mean, how how could it? I think, Yeah. you know, they're in hiding. They were in hiding together, essentially. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 scary and it's stressful. And, you know, in a, I think Lapis can't really see the difference. This is the thing. Lapis can't really see the difference between what she just decided to do and what they were doing before right because to her she's just she's in it's like hiding. Self, self-preservation for yeah her. she's still yeah. hiding yeah. um yeah they were they were isolated and they're scared but i think peridot has had a little more time to kind of discover the planet and i mean Labis, she saw it too but but peridot sort of she, uh came to earth under very different different circumstances circumstances. and she's less she's less afraid she hasn't had the experience that lapis had of like just how just how terrible this situation could become and and she's not experiencing that kind of fear which is why she feels so obligated to to be so helpful because she knows that she knows that there's a big imbalance in their experiences there and 
you know, she's trying to do whatever she can. But I think she also, uh, Peridot has had the experience of fighting and winning. Yeah, that's true. And that's something that Lapis has <laughs> never had. Yeah. I mean, she's just going off her experience. I mean, she's sort of. I guess, like, anyway, they're very, they're very different. They both got a lot of growing to do. And it was just, yeah, there was just a lot of problems coming in, but they'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, just like everyone, everyone's having a lot of problems because they're all I mean, yeah. terrified that they're going to be attacked by... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, at the end the, of the day... The force of a, of a yeah. huge planet that they're all from. I mean, even, even like at the end of the day, sort of like talking outside of them as characters and how they feel and what they've been through, it it's also like... This is also a story, and, you know, you can't really have a story without, you know, people in conflict, people, like, running from things, people fighting things, and that's just what they're doing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Could be fun. <laughs> Everyone. I mean, yeah, you could, but, like, Steven it would be. Universe, a- happy I mean, hangout adventures. We'll see if Cartoon Network wants to put that on here. <laughs> <laughs> like ages. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys so much for talking to me. Absolutely. Now that we've got a better understanding of Lapis and her development, let's talk to Jennifer Paz, who voices Lapis, and storyboard supervisor Hillary Florido about some of their favorite Lapis moments. All right, I'm here with Hillary Florido and Jennifer Paz. Thank you guys so much for coming on and talking to me today. Of course. Thanks for having us. For sure. Yay. Could you guys say uh, just what your, your jobs are, your roles, uh, so that people know? I play Lapis Lazuli. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I am a storyboard supervisor. Very nice. So do you guys ever uh, get to work together? Do your paths ever cross when you're working on the show? Sadly, no. Ne- not often. Never, actually. Sad. <laughs> we were just trying to figure it out. I think the most I've, interaction I've ever had with Hillary was at a recent party, right? Yeah. We got a party more. That's, we, we, yeah. that's the only solution. <laughs> so, more um, parties so we can connect. That's the answer. <laughs> that's always the answer. Oh. She's yeah. She's upstairs working while, while the few times that I've been downstairs in the booth. So um, yeah, we haven't actually crossed paths yet. Mm, not yeah. Well, that makes this very special. I know this is a yeah. first. Incredible. The first time we're in a room together. I can't wait to connect. I know. <laughs> um, so that means that you guys do you ever like when you're writing a the dialogue? Do you ever write uh, little bits of direction or anything like that, Hillary? Um, yeah, I think I do. But after, after, you know, after I've heard you done a couple episodes, you get the rhythm, kind of the cadence. So it gets across without having to write it out explicitly. If there's something I feel will not be conveyed in either the expression, yeah, I'll, I'll double down and write it in the action notes. Cool, cool. Lapis says a very deadpan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She is quite deadpan. Yeah. Assume deadpan if, if not specified otherwise. I've said this yeah. before, like, you know, she's, it's interesting because her powers are water, but she's very dry with her That's, humor. That is my favorite, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of the other. I don't know if that was on purpose, but I was, as I was like, would, would read her lines, I'm like, <laughs> and, you know, just the contrast with her interaction with, with Shelby, how she's like, you know, so always big, like so crazy. Yeah. So I just like, okay, I need to be the straight man in this, yeah, in this, this dynamic. So I would read it dry and like Rebecca would be like, okay, that's it. That's how you do it. I'm like, that's really funny. Like, she's, <laughs> the, she's dry, but she controls water. Hmm. The pun is, never, is a missed opportunity in the show, honestly. <laughs> I have never thought of it that way. But yeah, it's I super enjoy writing dialogue for you. Like when you're not like super sad as a character, <laughs> yeah. when you're just yes. having regular, right? Yeah, your kind of status quo is that like, you're just like a really dry. Thank you for that, dry. because honestly, like it. for a while, I was, I, you know, I would come in and I'm like, gosh, she's so. There's all this like she's working through drama, it, and I, I actually <laughs> have really enjoyed the last few times you've seen her because you see her just like light and interacting and just like kind of being with the other gems, and it's not like this this traumatic thing although it's it's all right. there yeah she's so, masking yeah. it i feel like she's the most like real time mm-hmm. when it comes to trauma it's you know it, it doesn't just like it's cool guys i'm a crystal gem now yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. she's a slow burn and that's that's fine and i like it and it's good yeah it's it real like, you really have to earn it with her yeah yeah, yeah. you don't want to rush her yes. she's not to be she's, rushed yes keeps things interesting no. yeah jen what's it like when you get your hands on a new script like when you're in the booth or do you get it beforehand 
I do get it like the night the night before, mm. <laughs> like a couple of days before. Um, like cliff notes you print out. I know. Out. <laughs> I'm always so you know thrilled to get a new script uh, about Lapis because I'm genuinely curious to see where you guys are taking her. Like out of all the gems, she's just kind of like still this very mysterious untapped, you know, um, you just, you, you're still learning about her. She's still processing all this internal trauma she's had. Um, she's still figuring out how to interact with everyone around her. She's still figuring out how to interact with people in her space. You know, you yeah. have to imagine that she's, she was trapped for thousands and thousands of years <laughs> by herself and now, you know, like you, you're like, okay, where, where are they going to take her? And I, I was listening actually a couple of days ago to a, the podcast that you did with, um, with Matt and Ben mm -hmm. and how, when you first met her, she has this tremendous amount of power. Like she b basically took out the three gems in that, yeah. that first episode that you see her in. And then also that they said that she likes fart jokes um, and, that she, and that she's awkward. So, like, the, the possibilities were yeah. endless with her. It's like, oh, my gosh, which, which way are they going to take her? So it's, it's, it was re it's really fun to see. It. And when I get the script, it's like, okay, which, which side of Lapis are we going to yeah, get She definitely watching? is carving her own path kind of in real time, mm -hmm. of figuring mm -hmm. out and deciding it. I mean, I think with, like, any character, there's tons of potential, but what they go through and how they interact with stuff informs how they proceed and how they use that potential. Right. Which is mm -hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. So Hillary, do you like, now that you know Lapis better, do you write it thinking of like Jen's delivery or are there any particular times where you've written something and been really excited to hear it come back? Um, I think that one of my, one of my favorite episodes that I've done writing on is uh, Barnmates. And that's a fun um, one. <laughs> I, there's a lot. Both you and Shelby nail that one, um, oh, especially when um, it's always nice to hear. <laughs> no, it's <was> perfect. <laughs> when uh, she digs or she fills up the hole with water, and it's like I made you a smaller than average size right. lake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your delivery of a, it was like was it water was like the tomb I lived in. Right. For, it's so like, dark. That's months. right. She's like water. Seriously. <laughs> um, this. I uh -uh. I I'm, feel like I'm done with this. I kind of knew how it would go, but you went above and beyond. Did I? Oh, good. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was perfect. That's really um. nice for me to hear because out of all of us, like I, I still like I'm rarely there. Mm -hmm. So when I come in for a record, it's like okay, I, I just want to please. I want to make sure that I, I, I deliver on the vision that they had and and hope that it's tr rooted in truthfulness and and they you know it's it's. I get, yeah, I deliver it. Oh, you <laughs> so did. It was it's, great. It's yeah. good to hear that. Yeah. I feel like sometimes it ends up being like too much, but I always find that it's the most funny when Lapis drops like some dark realness casually. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, by the way. By yeah. The way. Remember this awful thing that happened? Yeah. I think about it sometimes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I thought everyone was, was like that. <laughs> That's just me. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, were there any, like, uh, specific scenes or episodes that just really clicked for you guys, either of you? I, I loved Room for Ruby. I really enjoyed um, seeing her evolution in that you can really see that she's she's the realist in this, you know, this whole situation. Like, the, the other gems, Peridot and, and, and Steven were all ready to, like accept Ruby and she was like wait hold on you guys wait hold hold <laughs> slow your roll like we don't know the last time we saw Ruby she wanted to kill you like wait a minute yeah and um it was so satisfying at the end to see that okay you guys she was right <laughs> like, yeah. she was right in yeah. you know being suspicious. never forgets <laughs> um but she went along with it, which, you know, she was a good sport, but there was that, that let's proceed with caution, you guys. And mm -hmm. I, so I really appreciate that, that process that she has. That was, that was a very sort of pivotal moment for me. Like, oh, okay. She's kind of the pessimist. Like, that's really valuable. Yeah. Actually, that's you saying it now, it makes so much sense. And that's probably why I like writing for her is everyone else is pretty much like an optimist. Yeah. And she's, and I'm just like, wait, wait, hold, hold on, like, hold on, you guys. She's like more realistic. I'm like, and I'm kind of like that in my in my my partnership with with my with my fella. Like he's such an idealist, and I'm I'm just like, 
I'm the jaded, like, you know, oh gosh, been there, done that. <laughs> like, all right, you're going to learn. You're going to learn. Yeah. So that was very satisfying. <laughs> and she was like, ha, I knew it. <laughs> Got you. That was a really fun yeah. episode because like, yeah, she was just so confused that somebody could be that well adjusted. Absolutely. And that really sort of like triggered her resentment. Like, oh my gosh, like I, I, it took me so long and here's this gem, like uh, just relentlessly upbeat about it all. <laughs> um, and it, the more she was, the more annoyed like Lapis was. So, um, but then she was very self-aware and that she, you know, she gave herself a time out. She was like, oh. she, she went away and then she was like, wait, you guys, something's, really wrong with me like I I and and she just kind of dialed it back like uh, uh, I don't know I don't I don't know what's wrong with me but something is wrong so mm. um and she does in her way kind of apologize to Ru- Ruby when she says you know no it's not you it's me mm-hmm. like I'm sorry I you know I didn't mean to make you feel unwelcome here um so right yeah 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 <laughs> actually I really she's also I mean the con side is maybe she, like, runs away a bit, but also the pro side to that is that she's very good at, like, stepping back and being like, look, I can't deal. I need some time to think about this. I'm going to come back. Yes. Which is, which is a valuable skill. That's very, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is so interesting because now she she left, but she, I don't know, like, she... I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, but it makes sense. It makes sense for her because, like, you know, like, she's always the, like you said, the realist. And it's like there are intergalactic dictators, you know, targeting this planet. Why are you guys just, like, right. okay with this, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. It's I, fine. Yeah. Like, you can totally see where she's coming from. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She's she's definitely sort of in this survival mode, like, um, hearing that the diamonds are coming back to, you know, looking for Steven. Yeah, she freaks out. And I don't think she's able to see three, four steps ahead yet. She's just like, oh, my gosh, okay, they're coming. Um, and it's just like reminding her of where she was during the war. <laughs> so I, I kind of like associate it with, you know, when you're like on a airplane and they when it's about to take off, they're like saying like, <laughs> okay, if in case of an oxygen, yeah. there's no oxygen in the cabin, like secure your mask first. Like, yeah, she's securing her mask. mask first. <laughs> <laughs> and then you worry about your child after. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. She, she's no good for anyone. If yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that's perfect. Secure your mask before you can assist others. So <laughs> y'all like hating on Lapis for leaving. Like just hold on. She's just securing her mask. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She'll get to the children in a second. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so perfect. Great. <laughs> Where do you guys think like her head is at? Like after leaving, like just continuing on with that train of thought with the where she, what she's thinking about. I don't know where she's at while she's securing where her she, mask. Yeah. Yes, while she's securing I know. her mask. Maybe, I mean, you know, when you when you deal with conflict, sometimes you just kind of go back to your behavioral patterns. You know, mm. this is what she's used to. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she was trapped in that mirror for thousands and thousands of years, so she's kind of given herself a self inflicted timeout, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, securing I her mask and now she's got. There's like a ton of emotion, especially when she thinks of her connection to people and gems on Earth. But she, yeah, she reverts to the base, like fight mm-hmm. or flight. She knows like possible diamond interaction is bad. She yes. doesn't want to deal with it. I'm um, peace out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Which that's, is, you know, which is fair and valid. That's like, life, you know, right? She, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's only recently been introduced to a peaceful, mm-hmm. like, non-war landscape. Right, right, right. Yeah. I understand. I, I understand where she's coming from. You've been in that situation? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's interesting because uh, for me, I, and I've been called out on this, like, it's <laughs> that I go, I tend to, like, if I have a problem, I will, it's hard for me to ask for help. Mm. I'll go away and try to go figure it out myself and then come back to my partner, which for him, like he it deprives him of the opportunity to actually help me and which he finds so much joy in helping me solve a problem. But sometimes I'm just like, no, I need to go just go figure this out for myself. But right. I've been called out like, you know, that that's not relational. Like, yeah, that's you not need a- to let me help you if you need help. But sometimes I'm just like, let me just go deal with something. I don't want to be a burden to you right now. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not it's easy life. to be part of a team. Yes. It takes. She's figuring that out. There's how, a learning process. Yeah. It takes to two. In a relation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally understand. <laughs> 
So overall, what would you say is your favorite part of working on Lapis? Uh, everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like, I do like the dialogue. She's fun to write for. She's got the flowy skirt. True, and That's fun true. to like mm-hmm. draw when she's, it's not necessarily like fun to track, but it's fun to draw when she's <laughs> using her powers. Yeah, there's lots of really dynamic stuff you can do with water, and it's fun to fun to draw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think she's um, you know, with her character, like you guys have been able to tackle some some dark, deep issues with her. Yeah. There's a great opportunity there for, for a children's show. That's amazing mm-hmm. to do in a way that's yeah. like not intimidating, and adults can understand it. And kids mm-hmm. can take away what they can with it. Right, um, yeah. What are you hoping people will take away from it? From her character and her arc and everything? Gosh, I'm, I just thought of Alone at Sea all of a sudden. Like, that. that <laughs> that's the one. That's the one yeah, right there. there I mean, that I, th- people can take away that no matter how horrible of a situation you've been in, you are strong enough to get out of it, you know? Hmm. And that's Lapis's plight like that's her thing like she right yeah know, she's she was in this horrible situation and she got out of it and um it gets better you guys it gets it better it gets better <laughs> yeah that's real yeah that's real. yeah and i was saying earlier that you know she is not you know better in an episode she has long-standing trauma and that's going to take a while mm-hmm. and that that involves failing and making mistakes and running away and coming back yeah. and you just kind of have to keep doing it and keep trying it's all part of the process yes right, certainly yeah. like ex- self-examination examining the way you interact with others if that's healthy she's got all those things right she needs she needs therapy <laughs> yeah, well she, I mean, she's working it out. She's working it out. It's important. Yeah, she, she is asking questions, yes. and she's you know when she talks to Stephen about stuff, that's great. You know, and she likes a good fart your... joke. I and mean, she come on, for, yeah. And if you have a sense of humor, it can it counts for a lot. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It can help the whole package. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, Lapis Lazuli herself is coming up. All right, guys, I am here with Lapis Lazuli. Lapis, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I have What's a few going questions. on? Nothing Where are much. we? Is Just... this, am, I, am I speaking into this okay? Yes, yes, yes. You're doing, you're doing a great job. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So I have a few questions to ask you from some fans. So I'm just going to read through them, and if uh, you have any comments, then let me know. Okay? Sounds good. Okay, cool. The first question I have is what is the best idea for a meat morph that you've ever had? And this is from Didvax. Didvax. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I love a good fart joke. Mm. So I Mm. actually (laughs) wanted to include the pumpkin seeds in the toilet, but Peridot shot that down. Uh Oh, Um, And yeah, it was was a little, I don't know. I thought it was a great idea, but she shot that down. Not a a fan. Not a fan of the pumpkin seeds in the toilet. (laughs) In that same vein, do you have any ideas for like, that sounded really good for a meat more, but then they didn't end up coming together? I wanted to put together a bunch of cat hair, like cat balls around the wall in the barn. But then when I was looking for cats, pumpkin did not like that. Mmm. Pumpkin got very jealous of me trying to find cats. Oh, like, yeah. like So that was not good. It's a territorial thing, I think, you know? Very territorial thing yeah. that Pumpkin just did not like. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question is, a, a lot of people ask this one, if you think water is wet. Do I think water is wet? Yeah, because you're like the expert, right? It's certainly salty. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But I, I, I like that it just... No matter what, my hair just always is intact in the water. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know if it's wet. I don't even know what that means. I don't think anyone does. I think that's the, the big question there. But that's some good, good commentary. What do you think? I, you know, I think that water itself can't really be wet. Like, water can make other things. They can, if you're on a surface that's not normally wet, and you put water on it, then that makes it wet. yes. But like water is always, it's you can't put water on water. I don't know. These are these are questions beyond my pay grade. Yeah, I mean, I between salt water and fresh water, I I like I like salt water. Mmm, it's your your preference, the the ocean. It's, it's my preference. Very nice. 
Um, okay, cool. And then I have one more question from Michael, who wants to know why you don't wear shoes. Well, being trapped in a in a mirror for thousands and thousands of years, I never really got out, so I didn't mm. have any footwear. You know, you, you you really don't need shoes to fly around. Right. So I just kind of got used to it. Mm-hmm. Who, need, who needs shoes in the air? Yeah. Like, what's the point of walking when you can fly? Right. Yes. I, I totally understand. So that, that would sort of eliminate the need for shoes. Makes sense. I hope that helps. Yes, that, that does. That, that clears it up. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me, Lapis. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. The Steven Universe podcast is produced by Charles Abadji, Stacey Para, and Conrad Montgomery. Special thanks to Rob Sorcher, Cartoon Network Studios, The Crew Universe, and Turner Studios in Atlanta. You can subscribe to the Steven Universe podcast now at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts so that you never miss an episode. And please leave us a five-star rating interview while you're there. I'm Mackenzie Atwood, and I will see you next Thursday.